Hello and welcome to this course on MATLAB programming for numerical computations. We are in week 10 of this course. In this week, we have been discussing ordinary differential equations, boundary value problems. In the previous video, I introduced you to the boundary value problems and solved an example using an inbuilt MATLAB function uh, BVP5C. In this video, what we are going to do is to use a finite difference approach. Okay? So recall that this is the overall problem that we had. The gamma value we had taken was equal to 4. Okay? We are going to use solve using the finite difference approach. I also recommend you watch uh, the videos from week 4. What we had covered in week 4 is that you can use uh, finite, uh, 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 sorry, numerical differentiation in order to convert your overall uh, uh, problem into tridiagonal matrix equation and then we had solved it using tridiagonal matrix equation. In this video, I am going to show you how you are actually going to get, get that. Okay? So, and this was the next slide from week number 4. In fact, you would have also solved uh, 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 an, a home assignment problem on using a tridiagonal matrix as well. Okay? This week, we are going to talk about if you have a boundary value problem of a similar nature, how do you solve it? Uh, this was an example of a linear boundary value problem and therefore you can solve it using tridiagonal matrix equation. If it is not linear, you've got, you'll have to use non-linear solvers in order to solve it. Okay? So, let us look at this and how do we get this. So, we will take this entire rod okay, and split it into n intervals. L by N. At this point boundary condition and at this point also is going to be boundary condition that will be used. Okay? This we will start off with T1, this will be T2 and this will go on up to T n plus 1. Okay? So, that is what is going to happen. Now, T1 is 100. Okay? What about T2? At T2, you have d square T2 by dz square. Remember, we had said that this is going to be z. Ta. Okay? This guy is going to be nothing but T3 If we take h square on to the this side, this is what we are going to get. Okay? So, this we can rearrange this as T1 minus this is what we are going to get. We can write this for each and every of the internal location T2, T3, T4 up to Tn and what we are going to get is Ti minus 1 Oh, sorry, there was a negative sign. Minus h square gamma Ta. This is valid for i equal to 2 to n. At i equal to 2 at n plus 1, Tn plus 1 minus 25 equal to 0 or Tn plus 1 equal to 25. Okay? 
So, this is how we are going to have the setup and this will be of the form a y equal to b where y is plus 1. Okay. So, this is personally my recommend approach for solving ODE boundary value problems. Of course, you can use the ODV uh, sorry the BVP 5C solver also that we discussed in the previous video, but this is personally my preferred approach. So, let us go on to MATLAB and solve this boundary value problem. This is from the previous video, let me close this. rod conduct F D, let me, let me call that. Let me copy this. We have changed gamma back to 4 for the previous ok. Let me save this and let me run, run this. This was what we did in the previous video. Let me run this and have the solution for us ok. This is the solution. Let us now solve it using finite difference approach. Okay. Remember what we did over here, we just copy pasted everything, we do not need t initial y initial, we just need the step h, we need the z probably, maybe not actually we do not. So, a is nothing but Okay. Now, first boundary condition is a 1 comma 1 is 1, b 1 is 100. Okay. Now, let us write down the equations for the internal points. So, what is the overall model equations for internal points. We will write the internal points for i equal to 2 to n okay. and there we will need our 3 a guys okay, in the i th row. Right? So, the i th row is going to be so uh, t i minus 1 minus 2 plus gamma t i plus t i plus 1 equal to right hand side that is going to be the i th row. So, a i comma something is to be populated and we also need to populate b i. Okay. So, let us go to and look at our equation. So, the our equation is this. So, when you have your A matrix multiplied by y, so y is T1 and so on up to T i and something below. Now, we have our i th row. Okay. The i a i i, this is A i i this guy is A i th row i minus 1th column, A i th row i minus 1th column and this is A i th row i plus 1th column. 
okay so the coefficient of ti minus 1 goes over here the coefficient of ti plus 1 goes over here okay so what's the coefficient of ti minus 1 the coefficient of ti minus 1 is 1 coefficient of ti plus 1 is 1 so we will write this down i min minus 1 i plus 1 is 1 1 coefficient of a i i is negative 2 plus h square into gamma minus of 2 plus h square into gamma ok so that is our a i i and our b i is <coughs> h square sorry b i is h square gamma t a h square into gam into t a ok I will end this and then we will have to write this for the right boundary also and the right boundary is n plus 1 n plus 1 ok so what is our right boundary condition? Right boundary condition is T n plus 1 equal to 25. So which means A n plus 1, n plus 1 is going to be 1 and B n plus 1 is going to be 25. Okay. So this is what we have now. Okay, so now solution and plotting. Now this is what we have done in the past. We do not need to use TDMA for, for this. I uh, will just use shortcut over T is going to be nothing but A slash B. That is going to be the shortcut I will use and I will plot Z comma T. Okay. So let us see what, what we get, save this and run and let us see if this runs or if we get an error, okay. And yeah, so there seems to be some kind of a problem over here. The problem might be with respect to some of the parameters that we have, we might not have put them exactly right. So let us look at looking at the each and every uh, parameter once again. Okay. So, the value of Ta is 25, gam is 4, our H is uh, L by N, so all of that is fine. Okay. So, we have uh, minus 2 plus H square gamma, that is correct. minus 2 into h square plus gamma and our b i is negative h square t a, okay. b i is negative h square t a, okay. So if we were to have this as a negative h square t a and we run this, we will get the correct values, okay. So as you can see, the black line exactly falls over the blue line. Blue line, if you recall, was the solution from uh, the rod conduction problem solved using uh, BVP 5C in the previous lecture. Okay. Then what we did, we tried to solve this particular problem using the finite difference approach. Okay. Now we had set up the overall problem correctly, okay. but what happened is we made a particular mistake in uh, writing out our right hand side. The mistake that we did in writing the right hand side is I forgot the negative sign over there. Okay. Uh, so what happened when I put, I forgot the negative, negative sign? I got a result that might have seemed like it is a correct result. Okay. But 
Now let's think about what we are getting is one end of the rod is kept at 100 degrees Celsius. Another end of the rod is at 25 degrees Celsius. The rod loses heat to the surroundings, which is at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. So at no point of time, the temperature of the rod is going to fall below 25 degrees Celsius. But if you look at what's happening with the red line, the line fell below 25 degrees Celsius. So I knew that there was something wrong with it. Okay, so once I realized that there is something wrong, okay, I went back to the overall problem and checked everything location by location. Okay, so let us look back into something that I had talked about in week one and week two, and that's about debugging, right? So when we talk about debugging, this is the third type of uh, location in which you do the debugging. The first part is when for example, uh, the code itself sh shows an error, that code will show an error and this guy instead of being a green check mark or an orange uh, warning sign, it will be a red color exclamation sign which says that it's an error. You won't be able to even run that MATLAB code because there is an error uh, in, in the MATLAB file. Okay, so that was the first type of error. Second er uh, level of debugging was a runtime error. That means although the code seems to be okay, but there was a runtime error. And the third type of error was MATLAB runs correctly. It gives you a result, but that result is not the correct solution to the problem that you had solved. And this particular example clearly demonstrate how to handle where errors when errors like this appear. Okay, so with that, I think we'll come to the end of this particular lecture. What we have done in the last couple of lectures is take the rod conduction problem. In the previous lecture, we solved it using ODE BVP. In this lecture, we solved it using finite difference method. This finite difference method was exactly the same what we used earlier in uh, week number four. Okay, there's really no difference. The primary difference is in week number four, I had directly given you the equations. In this week, I showed you how we can derive those equations using the concepts from week number six, that is numerical differentiation concepts from week number six can be applied and we can convert a ODE boundary value problem into a set, set of linear equations. We can then solve them just as A inverse B or using tridiagonal matrix algorithm. Okay, so that's what we have done so far in the first couple of lectures of week 10. With this, I come to the end of this lecture. I hope you enjoyed watching this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Thanks and bye.